So I was going to write this play down for you and even type it, but you know I'd never finish it. So I thought I'd just do it for you, sort of impromptu. Oh yeah? Yeah! Okay. I need this chair, all right? You're so fucking lively. Well, I don't give a fuck. So I was gonna write this play because, well, I was masturbating this afternoon and I can never get any good fantasies into until I do some good old realistic type logical thinking out of things first. I can usually find the answers to some depressing shit that's been bogging me down, like you, for instance. Or I uh, plan projects for later when I'm done masturbating. Or I think about writing a letter to someone. You know, just to warm up a good cycle of thoughts. <laughs> but today I had a real inspired idea. Don't start preparing any judgments against me because I have thought this out. I haven't begun yet. And I assume that you'll allow me this time. Excuse me. So I had this idea about a girl, a woman, me paper mache yourself while explaining yourself to someone over the phone. Don't you see I didn't choose? Or a woman, me, paper mache yourself while ignoring the doorbell. She's just goddamn ready to sit around a while constructing and explaining things to certain people. young, I'd see that life was so wonderful, a miracle. Oh, it was beautiful, magical, and all the birds in the trees, they'd be singing so happily, joyfully, oh, playfully watching me. But then they showed me a world where I could be so dependable, clinical, oh, da 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 you know what happened to me today? <sighs> My brother hit me in the ear. You know which ear? Guess which ear? This one. The same one you slugged. I suppose you might remember. Yeah. It was weird at that moment when he hit me because I became like this big living echo. I mean, it was like, it didn't make any difference that, that I was in a different house, different room, different situation, a different person doing it, probably in a different way. I think he used the flat of his hand. But it didn't really make any difference because at that moment I shrunk so tiny and I traveled so far down some tunnel. No, down some uh, dry, empty well that I hit this horrible sameness. And I sounded to myself exactly the same. I fell right to the core of something. And uh, my poor brother, I mean, all he had done really was slap his sister's ear. All of a sudden, I was hyperventilating tears. It was bizarre. I think my crying and my tears actually came out in the same pattern as the first time. It's the time that you hit me. All I could say to him was, you don't hit. He hit 
history and got an old response. It's too bad he had history. But I guess I own that little response now. He kept saying, I'm sorry I hit you. I didn't mean to hit you. He even offered me ice cream and water all in one sentence. Well, he's a very good person. You know why he hit me? I don't remember why you hit me, but you know why he did? Because I didn't know the words to this song we were listening to. Actually, I didn't know one sentence. I knew the rest. And my brother started taunting me. He, he, he said, you don't even know the best line in the whole song. So I squashed my whole face together like this. And I started moaning. I didn't pass the test. 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 This house and my face rotate around me like a sickness. And because of it, I will bleed. I will bleed like a rusted weed in a boiling pot. I want to remind you of this poem that we wrote together one night with another ex-friend of yours. As a matter of fact, you hit him too. <laughs> Repeatedly. Oh. Cat food. Get me home. It's the furthest place away from me. No matter how many people I don't know talk to me fresh, you're just a man in a cat suit. Fuck the man in a cat suit. This is the part that you wrote. I was so jealous. Fuck the man in a cat suit. He a honky and cheap threads. Brother Bricktop is going to set him on fire. And I only just met him back there on his proper slab of sidewalk. His cat probably wears a cat suit too. And he has never, never touched the inside of a pumpkin. Pumpkin. And <laughs> the difference between myth and dream is the inability to sleep. She fell into her own reflection, black, black, backwards, tormented by images of herself that she could not see. There was no one around to create them for her. She asked speechless questions. She hinted at some blackness internalized, eternalized. She knew how black her soul found her body. This was to be a narrative, so just let me say this without thinking that I'm wholly involved. Maybe I'm addicted to this image of myself that somehow you have created. And it can be a dream. Or maybe this is something that you have been dreaming. It's like trying to catch a fly when you talk to her. The things that are worthy of your attention are not worthy of her. If you smell the blood on your hands, you can catch an image of her face. It's ugly. But aren't you smart enough to know what she's making you do? An imitation of crime? Delirium tremens? Thank you.
of my paralysis withstands its own price. And whether you think of it as heavenly or earthy, if you love life, immortality is no consolation for death. And I wanted to kill you in this play, not myself. I've been thinking about how I feel lately. The less you reveal of yourself, the more I will demand will my process be kindled? You see, there is this deaf man. I don't even have to give him a name. He has unknowingly walked past the window of a house where a woman is screaming. She could be dying, and it could be horrible, but he doesn't hear her. So I write him a letter full of lies about another woman screaming. She's older. She has gray hair. The woman is screaming because she can't find her shoes and they were priceless. The letter sends shivers down the deaf man's spine because he tried. 
trust me. He believes that the letter is the truth. Language is everything. I'm telling you. But I can hear the young girl downstairs tying her fucking shoes. I've been thinking about how I feel lately. I don't recall you being near me with when I've been so shaken. Give it up.